One of the reasons many students fail their student visa interview is because they overlook some critical steps and best practices. It is common for many students to be nervous, which exasperates it. Don't worry though, we've done the legwork and made it easy. Hey Green Card Easy viewers, today we're talking about the steps to prepare for your F1 visa interview. We will cover what documents to carry, how to organize them, what to wear, and other essential details to maximize your chances of getting your F1 visa. If you're looking for other F1 visa related topics, including an overview, how to book an F1 visa appointment, interview structure, and questions and answers, check out our F1 visa playlist. We we'll leave the link in the description below. Let's dive into today's topic, steps to prepare for your F1 visa interview. First things first, get organized. In the last year or two, you've done a lot. You've taken tests, applied to different universities, filled out many forms and provided a ton of documentation. Now imagine that the visa officer asks you to give them one of these many documents. You don't want to fumble, get distracted and ruin your chances of getting your student visa. Even worse, you don't want to miss carrying a document that you should have brought. It will likely result in getting a 221G, which is a visa rejection. The solution is simple, get organized. That way you're relaxed and focused on your interview. If the visa officer asks you to provide documents, you can provide them quickly and leave a positive impression. To begin with, you need an organizer. We like document organizers such as these with sections you can label. Be sure to invest in one that will last you for years. You will need to carry it with you for multiple uses. Travel, US immigration, university orientation sessions, etc. We will leave links to the ones we recommend in the description section below. Now, let's review the documents you need to bring with you. According to the US Department of State, the following are the required documents. Passport, DS-160 confirmation page, application fee payment receipt, and a physical photo, but only if the photo didn't upload with your DS-160. This is highly uncommon. And lastly, form I-20. Most applicants will be single. If your spouse and or children intend to live with you, bring their I-20s also. The US Department of State also provides with a secondary list. It recommends academic documents, including your transcripts, test scores, degrees and diplomas, and also your financial documents. They also list your intent to depart the United States upon completion of the course of study. In other words, they're asking for a return plane ticket. It does not apply to F1 student visa applicants as most airlines don't even sell tickets that far into the future. Most F1 visa applicants buy a one-way ticket, so don't worry about it. If it comes up in the interview, you can tell the visa officer that you will purchase one when the airline starts selling them. Those were all the documents that the US Department of State recommends. However, based on our experience, we recommend carrying all the documents you've gathered during your university application process. Those will include letters of admission, scholarships or financial aid document, student loan documents, bank statements, sponsorship letters, etc. Additionally, carry all your current and past passports. Folks with dual citizenship will have multiple active passports and should carry them all. Organize the documents in the folder we recommended earlier. Label different sections so you can locate your document quickly. Your goal should be to find any requested document within 10 seconds. Everyone has a different organizational style, so we encourage you to use the one that works best for you. A trick to ensure that you're not taking too long is to say this out loud. I have it with me, give me a quick moment while I look for it. 
you should start looking for your document while saying this phrase or something similar. That way you keep the conversation going and don't waste time. Remember, the visa officer places emphasis on the conversation more than the document, so it's important to focus on the conversation. Keep practicing until you know your folder thoroughly. Next, let's discuss your appearance. Multiple studies show that well-groomed people, men and women, perform better in academic and professional fields. The visa interview is no different. In this section, we will discuss many things. Our viewers are from different parts of the world, so we try to speak to a broader audience. If anything we're recommending goes against your religious, cultural, or personal beliefs, please ignore it. First and foremost, wear a smile, even if the visa officer is serious or stoic. We're not joking. A warm smile makes you look personable, which improves your chances of getting a visa. Next, pick out the right clothes. We recommend business casuals. If you haven't heard this term before, don't worry. It refers to clothes you would wear if you go on an event that doesn't require full formal attire, but you can't wear casual clothes either. You cannot go wrong with a button-up shirt, formal pants, and dress shoes for men. We recommend researching what business casual is appropriate for your country for women. Dress for the weather as well. For example, if you're in a hot country and interviewing in summer, wear breathable clothes. While the consulate will have air conditioning, you may have a slight weight before getting in. Make sure you account for that as well. Make sure your clothes are clean, wrinkle-free, and well-fitted. Stick to safe colors. Stay away from overly bright colors and striking patterns. These guidelines also apply to your general appearance. You don't want to show brightly colored hair or excessive piercing or tattoos. While we encourage individualization and freedom of expression personally, it's not us but the visa officer that you're trying to win over. Be mindful of it. Being well-groomed also means getting a good haircut. Don't get a haircut a day before the interview. Do it a week prior. That way, you have an opportunity to salvage a bad one. Those who wear a mustache or a beard, trim it to have a presentable appearance. Those who wear makeup, make sure you don't go overboard. Be mindful of other little things, such as carrying tissues or a handkerchief to dab your face if it's hot. Anything that helps you look well-groomed. To summarize, a rule of thumb is that you should look presentable and personable. Next is to plan your travel, living accommodations, and local transportation. If your embassy is not in the same city as you live in, you will need to travel. Make sure to book your travel and accommodations in advance. You don't want to leave things for the last minute and stress yourself out. You want to be well rested and in sound mind space for the interview. Some of you will need to visit biometrics or a service center before your visa interview. We've talked about it in our USA visa appointment booking video. We've left a link to it in the description below if you need to refer to it. If your city of residence does not have a service center, you might combine it with your visa interview trip. In this case, you're getting the biometrics done at least three days before your interview. The locations for your interview and your biometrics may be different. We recommend picking a place close to the visa interview location. You don't want to be late for the interview, which could result in cancellation. Some folks may be staying with your relatives or friends. Make sure you research different modes of transportation available to you. Also, have a backup plan. Imagine taking public transportation such as a bus or train, and there being a breakdown. You should be familiar with an alternate means of transportation. If you need to call a cab or taxi, have the taxi service number handy. If you have other options such as Uber, Lyft, or Ola cabs, ensure that you have the apps installed 
and your account set up in case you need them. Similarly, have enough cash in your person should you need it. Once you finish researching your travel, living accommodations and local transportation, make reservations in advance wherever possible so you're not leaving things to the last minute. Finally, here are the things to do once you've arrived in the city of your interview. We recommend arriving in the city for your interview at least 24 hours ahead of your interview. When you've arrived and have checked into the place you're going to stay at, we recommend doing a practice run. The goal of the practice run is to familiarize yourself with the new dynamics associated with this process. It includes taking the same mode of transportation that you plan on taking during the day of your interview. It will help you become familiar with the route. If you take a bus or train, you will know your departure and arrival stops or stations. You will become familiar with the route if you plan to take the road. Once near the visa interview location, make sure you walk around to get familiar with the surroundings. You may also get an opportunity to observe the visa applicants for that day and better understand the dynamics outside the consulate or embassy. Your visa appointment instructions may ask you to arrive 15 minutes before your appointment. We highly recommend you plan on arriving 30 minutes or an hour before the arrival time. That is to allow for a healthy buffer if something goes wrong on the day of your interview. You may be wondering, where would you wait if you arrived early? This is one reason we ask you to survey the surroundings the day before you interview. Locate a local restaurant or a coffee shop where you can wait before you interview. It should be very close and shouldn't take you more than five minutes to walk. That way, on the day of the interview, it will allow you to calm down and relax before the interview. It will be vital as it is common to be nervous on the interview day. It will also allow you to review the key points you should be mindful of to interview better and get a positive outcome. Talking about which, our next video will focus on things you need to do on the day of your interview so you can get your student visa and pursue your dreams. Subscribe and turn on all notifications if you don't want to miss them. My name is Gaurav Musle and from all of us at Green Card Easy, thanks for watching.